morning, my internet dwelling friends. How's it going? How's it going? Pull up a chair, sit down. Vlog's about to start. We have to deliver this load that I have behind me into Brainerd, Minnesota today, and I have no plans after that. No idea what's gonna happen. So we're flying by the seat of our pants. It's gonna be fun. Thanks for being here. Uh, don't forget to make sure you go down. Uh, I had a subscriber. It doesn't happen too often, but I had someone reach out to me yesterday to say that YouTube had unsubscribed them. I didn't know if that was like a YouTube conspiracy that YouTubers just said just to make sure people went down there and subscribed. I didn't want to be part of that, like, you know, trying to sneak you down there, hit that subscribe button. But apparently it's a real thing. Someone got unsubscribed from my channel without unsubscribing themselves, so they had to resubscribe. So if you want to do me a favor right now, just uh, go down below the video, just make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. I'd appreciate that. Let's get out there. I should have just gone. I should have just gone. Oh, and they're taking forever to. Oh, and now there's another car. Okay. See, this is what I get for being nice. Now I gotta sit here and wait. You're welcome. One more. There's one more coming. Bear with me. You're welcome. I'm way too nice, you know? That's why it takes me so long to get everywhere, because I'm always making room and waiting for everybody else. Sometimes you just need to stick your nose in there, right? Get going. In 100 meters, turn left on. Avenue, two. I just can't do that. I can't bring myself to do that. Hey, look at the, the flags here at half mast again. What happened? Why are the flags at half mast? Did the president die? I'm gonna have to check Google when I stop. Something happened. So often. I come to the US, the flags are always at half mast, so I always gotta Google like what what happened? Buddy, you had your left turn signal on. I would have turned out in front of you if there wasn't traffic coming from the other direction. Turned your signal on too soon, man. Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go. Sticking my nose in. So I've been trying a new weight loss strategy, trying to shed a few pounds. I'd like to lose about uh, 30, 35 pounds, but uh, you know, struggling to find motivation some days. Uh, I think we can all well, kind of relate to that. It's kind of difficult, right? But I'm trying. So I'm trying this intermittent fast and fasting thing. Uh, pretty much what that means is I only eat from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., from 9 to 5. After 5 p.m., I just don't eat until the next morning. We'll see how that does for me. So far I'm on day three of it now. First day was a little bit difficult. Yesterday was a little easier. But it's easy because you know, you, you don't eat while you sleep anyway, right? So it just means you gotta have a bit of an earlier supper and a bit of a later breakfast. And you sleep most of the most of the time while you're not eating, so you don't notice it. I'll see what that does for me after a month or two. I don't think I'm like severely overweight, but according to doctors and experts, I am obese, apparently. So I'm at uh, about 
147 pounds, heaviest I've ever been in my life. And my weight I would like to be at is between 180 and 190, under 200 at least. We're gonna try real hard this summer too. As the weather's better, it gives you more motivation. There's more opportunities to go out for walks and spend time outside and be active. Think about it. 
I don't really want to sell it. I want to keep it, but I'm not using it. And I think Theo would really like the opportunity to have some kind of off-road vehicle that we can you know, enjoy together on the trails. There's no lineup outside, so hopefully I'll be able to just drive right in. Someone want to go ring the doorbell? Oh, I've got a bit of a mess over here. I'm gonna have to clean up right away. I spilled some coffee in my truck before, so I got my floor towels over here. Ugh. That's why I got those floor towels on the floor. They soak up all the coffee. So now I just threw them over here for now. Gotta take care of that and all my stuff. Ah. Can't always be super neat, I guess. It's work to be done. All right, let's back out of here. back there and I put it up there because it's better that uh, wet towels are on my floor mat than on the rug in the back Ugh, I was so dumb this morning I I, I, made, I did a dumb dumb I did a dumb I was a little bit dumb today so dumb okay so this is what happened see if I can turn on some lights back here so you can see so I was sitting back here right doing my stuff getting my videos together getting them ready to release to you making sure everything was all set to be released at 4 p.m. And I put my coffee 
down on this ledge over here. I just, I had a coffee in my hand, I was sipping it, I was like, eh, where do I put this coffee? Ah, there's no cup holders back here. Well, there is a cup holder back there. Should have used the cup holder, but I don't like using that one because it's right over my mattress. And if I forget my drink in there, then it splashes out of my drink and onto my pillow and my mattress. I don't like doing that. And I didn't want to reach all the way to the front to the, because I was lazy. So I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll just put it down right here. I'll just put it down right here. That'll be fine. I'll get it before I go and I'll put it in the cup holder in the front. Well, I hit the road and I forgot that it was right there. I only went maybe like two miles. I was like, oh shoot. And I reached behind the seat here to there and it was gone. Oh no. So I turned around and looked down to the floor and there it was lying on its side, an entire extra large coffee on the floor. And I always have towels on the floor, right? To cover the floor to, to save the carpet and stuff. And thank God I did. I mean, it went right through the towel, soaked through it, but hopefully the majority of the actual coffee stayed in the towel. So I had to pull over and then uh, clean it all up, dry it out the best I could with paper towel and towels that I had in here. And then I uh, put my fan here, blowing on it. So it's pretty much all dried out already, I think. I'm gonna have to vacuum it now because I was in a panic and just ripped the towels out of here and all the dirt got on the rug now, but. So that's drying that out. Hopefully that'll be good, but I'll, uh, I'll leave it on there for a good 24 hours at least, just blowing on it to hopefully dry it out. And uh, we have a little shampooer at home in the shop. Uh, I'll probably just shampoo the carpet when I'm in the shop and clean it all out. So it could have been a lot worse. I mean, it didn't get on anything. It didn't uh, wreck anything as far as I know. I just want to make sure that, that moisture gets out of there because I don't want that to start molding or something. So we'll make sure that that's all good and dry, fixed properly. And we'll remember for next time. Don't, don't even put your coffee down there for a second. Don't, don't promise yourself, oh, don't worry, before I start moving, I'll remember to grab it. You're gonna forget. If you're anything like me, you're probably better than me at remembering stuff. So maybe this doesn't apply to you. But for me, I will forget. So I cannot be lazy and put my drink down here while I'm working here. Just go to the front and put it down in a cup holder there. That's my story. That's still a little wet. Uh, not too wet, but look at all that. Oh, I gotta vacuum that up now. Uh, that carpet is usually spotless, but like I said, I panicked it. And the top of the towels get some dirt on them, right, sometimes? And I just ripped the towels out of there. I was like, oh no, yelling at myself and everything. And uh, all of it flew off the towel onto the rug. And I was like, oh no, again. Now I made an even bigger mess than I had to. It's been a day, but still a good day. I mean, uh, like I said, could have been worse. Nothing got wrecked. I got my trailer unloaded now. I'm headed back up to Kenora again. We're going to go through Rainy River this time because I'm not in a big rush like I was yesterday. Uh, so we're going to go through Rainy River, save ourselves that $25 toll. It's only 20 kilometers further going that way. It would only cost me about $10, $10 in fuel to go around that way, but it would cost me $25 in a toll to go through International Falls into Fort Francis. So it is cheaper for me to go up that way. We'll be in Kenora tonight. We'll get loaded first thing tomorrow morning. And that load delivers down here in Brainerd again Monday morning. So it's a Thursday today when I'm filming this. I, I know it's a few days behind. It confuses people sometimes. But uh, filming this on a Thursday, we're gonna go pick it up on a Friday, deliver it on a Monday. So we're gonna go home in between. I'll probably I'll be home Friday afternoon, Saturday, Sunday. We'll leave early, early Monday morning, or possibly even Sunday night to get a little head start. We'll uh, we'll see. It'd be nice to get down here first thing Monday morning, because then I could be ready for a reload down here Monday afternoon. But see what happens I got a lot of stuff to get done at home too and it's just nice to spend some time at home I don't like cutting my weekends short all the time now and then when we're running hard like I am now a lot of my weekends get cut short I'll get back on the Saturday or I'll get back on Friday leave on the Sunday I think I'd like a whole weekend at home but you know I'll see how we're feeling and uh, see what the reload situation looks like when I get back down here Oh, such a beautiful day out here. What's the temperature? What's the temperature? 10 degrees Celsius. 10 degrees Celsius. Go, go. What is 10 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 10 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. Minnesota in February, right? 
Not bad. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm loving it. So here's my trailer. It's a little windy. I apologize if there's wind noise. It is what it is. We're outside and there's wind outside. So we're going to be holding on to this trailer next week too. Because I'm loading this trailer up tomorrow morning. Holding on to it to deliver it on Monday. So me and this triaxle are going to be friends. It's married to my truck for another week. We'll see what happens. Oh man, I don't even want to get back in the truck. I just want to sit out here in the sun. I can already tell that the sun is higher in the sky. I can feel it because it's hitting me more directly. When you're up here in the north, you can really feel in the wintertime how the sun sort of grazes you. It doesn't hit you, it sort of grazes the earth, right? Because we're so far north, especially when you go further north into Canada. And in summertime, the sun, bam, hits you right on top of your head. Ugh, it's one of the most fascinating things. I know, I talk about it all the time. I talk about it all the time position of the sun in the sky and through the seasons. I think it's interesting. I think that's so cool. I live in a place that has such different seasons. Like in summertime, the sun won't go away. It like rises in the northeast, goes around over us, and then sets in the northwest. But in wintertime, it barely pops above the horizon. This is boop. It rises in the southwest, southeast, sets in the southwest. Ah, I don't I'm never gonna think that that's not cool. Fascinating how this world works, right? I wish going to space was really cheap, you know? I wish they'd have space tourism that was affordable for the average person, that we could just go up there and see the Earth from like 100 miles up. It'd be scary, right? Scary, once in a lifetime thing. It's sort of like, you know, going to, going to Fiji, almost. Except it'd be so cool to see everything from up there, get that perspective. Space is interesting to me. Space and planets. I always thought maybe if I went into school that I'd take astrology. No, astronomy. I always get those mixed up. Not astrology. Astronomy. Learn about space. I'm kind of glad I didn't because that would have been a useless degree. How would I make money off that? I'm not going to be a space scientist. I knew I always wanted to be a truck driver. So what would a degree in astronomy do to help me? There's a lot of degrees out there that are useless. So young people that are uh, finishing up high school soon, you're thinking about going off to college, university, think about it. Like, Make sure the degree that you're gonna get that you're paying lots of money for is useful and that will make you money. So many degrees that they offer, which are interesting if you have this extra money to blow, they're not gonna make you any money. If you want my advice, I mean, for what it's worth, I don't know how much it's worth to you, but if you want my advice, I'd say go to trade, trade school, college, Learn a trade. I'd say be a truck driver if you want to, but this lifestyle isn't for everybody. A lot of people hate this lifestyle. I happen to just, uh, I happen to love this job and I come from a family that's all into trucking and I've surrounded myself with friends that also love this job and I make it look exciting. It can be very tough. Not a lot of people actually like it, but I do. Maybe you will too. If not, man, there's lots of other trades you could do. Plumbers, electricians, you'd be engineer. It's something that's gonna be useful to this world. Everybody's always gonna need a plumber. That's always, always gonna be a thing. Everyone's gonna need an electrician. That's always gonna need, that's always gonna be a thing. An engineer or an architect. People are always gonna wanna build buildings, build bridges. Those are useful jobs that actually help society and that help us move our countries forward, right? Make sure you, uh, if you get like a degree in some kind of liberal arts, you're not gonna go very far with that after school. It's maybe kind of cool to go through it if that's what you're into. Not gonna make you any money.
corner from the Canadia Barter. Crossing from Baudette, Minnesota into Rainy River, Ontario. I feel good about this because there's no tolls here. Have I mentioned that yet? <laughs> I hate tolls. I, I pay enough taxes. What do you mean, tolls? Uh, so I'm just getting all my stuff together, making sure I got my passport. I got to get out at this specific, uh, the, some of the smaller border crossings, truck drivers have to pull off to the side, get out and bring in their information into the, into the building. So I want to make sure that I don't have any delays. I don't want to mess around in my truck when I'm there. I want to be all ready to just jump out of the truck. So I got my toque right here, got my sweater on, ready to jump out of the truck when I get to the window there. Some places when you go to bigger border crossings, you don't get out of your truck. You just drive up to the window, right? Some smaller ones are very slow, very small. All depends on the crossing. This is one of them where I have to get out, so I'm all ready. Okay, I think I am. I did buy some fruit while I was in the States here, but I ate it already and I got rid of the uh, the peels. They don't even like it if you cross the border with the peels, like banana peels and stuff, or the apple cores. They want you to throw that out before you cross the border, going each way. So if I buy fruit in the US, they don't want me to take it into Canada. Even though most of the fruit in the grocery stores of Canada are from the US. But they want them to come through in a trailer, not in the cab of the truck. Same thing when you come south. You can't bring fresh fruit with you from Canada across the border into the US. They don't like that. So as long as you've eaten it already and gotten rid of the peels and the cores. I didn't think that the peels and the cores were such a big deal, but I got to the border once and then you got any fruit. No, no, finished my apples. I just got the apple core here in the garbage. And he got a little upset. He says, well, you should have thrown that out before you got here. Oh, I guess that makes sense. It's still part of the fruit, right? It makes sense. Yeah, now I know. So let's, let's go. Got another two hours. And there's no real rush to get uh, loaded tomorrow. I've just got to be loaded sometime tomorrow morning. I'm going home after I get loaded because I can't deliver till Monday. So we'll get a good sleep in, get, get some work done, get some videos edited. Looks like I might be doing a lot of this next week. My wife Britt's egg retrieval is coming very soon now and I've got to be home for that day so I'll be staying very close to home. So when we get that date, we might even know tomorrow. But as soon as we know what date that is I have to be sure that I'm home for that because that's a big invasive procedure and uh, they drug her up a little bit for it so she can't drive home and I want to be there. I can't be there for every appointment, but I want to be there for uh, the bigger ones like that. In two kilometers, turn right on International Drive and at 72. It's a nice little town up here. Way up on the upper edge of Minnesota. Right up against the border with Canada. I don't know how they convince people to live up here. So I mean, if I lived up here, if I, well, if I lived on this side of the border, I wouldn't be living up here. I'd be living down in Florida. Or Texas. I already live as far south as I can in, in Manitoba, for the most part. It's about 100 miles from the U.S. border. Uh, for some reason, they convince people that they to live up here. There's lots, lots of people up here. Which is a good thing. There's a massive sign there. Welcome to our town, Trump. <laughs> that's that's pretty much all I see when I'm in the U.S. Until you go to the big cities, then it's totally polar opposite. In 600 meters, turn right on International Drive and add 72. In 300 meters, turn right on International Drive and add 72. 
you know, I'm not going to get into politics on my channel here. At least I try not to. At least not very often. Sometimes I just can't help myself. It is an election year in the U.S., so you know everything is going to be about to get very spicy. Very exciting. Like the U.S. elections are like Holly. Uh, I shouldn't say Hollywood productions, but you know what I mean. Like they are very entertaining. 2024 is going to be all about America. I pay close attention to everything that's going on. And then in Canada, 2025 is our big year where we... Approaching destination in one kilometer on the right side. We're hoping for some very big change in 2025 in Canada. And by the looks of it, and all the polls right now, it looks like we're going to get the change we want. See, in this bridge here, I'm gonna go on about tolls again, watch out, disclaimer. You see this bridge? No toll. And see how much nicer it is than the one in Approaching Fort Francis? In meters on the right side. This is a nice bridge. How come this one's free and the other one's not? The other one looks like it's falling apart. It's been under construction for longer than I've been alive. You have Maybe arrived at your destination on the right side, Canada border, Rainy River, Highway 11. Continue on this road for 52 kilometers. Whoa, whoa, Karen. First, we got to go introduce ourselves to the good border personnel here. Let them know who we are, where we're going from, where we're going from, where we're going to, where we came from, what we're doing, what our name is. I go off to the side here, and then I walk in. That's just for cars on the left. I like this border crossing a lot better, actually. Fort Francis is so chaotic and, like, cramped. It's hard to get in there because it's so, everything is so close together. I wonder what's in here. You know, these containers probably came from across the world over the Atlantic. They probably ended up at the port of Thunder Bay or the port of Montreal. And now they're headed inland to the prairies. I don't think they'd be going all the way to BC because if they were going to BC, wouldn't they dock on our West Coast port? Unless this would be cheaper to dock on the East Coast and then send it by train across. That's a long way to go though. I don't know, I'm not a train, I'm not a train guy. I'm a trucker. Supposed to wait till they get all the way up and the lights turn off. There we go. I'm thinking of stopping at that uh, rest area by that cliff. It's just around the corner here. Same place we stopped at on the way back from Quebec on the last day of our last trip. Thinking about it.
Oh, lots of room right here. Perfect. Right here. And this spot will work just fine for me. Perfect. So we're gonna stop here. We have to be here for at least eight hours before I can get going again. I'll just go pick up the load. There's no big rush, like I was saying before. Just go pick up the load and go home. Don't worry about that on Monday. Don't worry about delivering it Monday. So thanks for joining me today, everybody. It was a lot of fun. Uh, started in Deer River, went down to Brainerd, came back up here to Kenora, and now I'm just around the corner from where I need to be. Usually, like I was saying, I don't like parking at these places that don't have facilities in the wintertime, but it's not too cold outside. Right now, it's minus four out, outside the truck. And I also have a working bunk heater that can keep me warm now, so I'm not as worried about the truck shutting off because that'll keep me warm. I've also got a booster pack that was sent to me uh, not too long ago that if my battery dies overnight, I can boost my truck right here. I don't have to call a $250 tow truck to come and hook up some cables and boost my truck. So that's not an issue anymore. I got my engine heater that'll warm up my engine and everything's running well. So I, I feel all right parking the truck here overnight. And I'm close to town. I mean, if worse comes to worse, I can call a cab to come get me or, you know, if it was an emergency, I could call the cops to come bring me into town if it was that cold. Like if it was suddenly minus 30 outside, which would be crazy now, it drops that much but it's suddenly minus 30 outside and I'm freezing yeah I could find a way to get into town and get somewhere warm but it won't come to that tonight thanks for hanging out everybody if you uh, want to help me out if you want to support the channel and support me best thing you can do for free is hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button and the bell if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet or if you have before just do me a favor go down below if you haven't already just make sure you're still subscribed and if you want to take it one step further and you do want to support us a little bit more, you can join and become a member. Click the Join Now button below the video or on my main page, and it'll uh, tell you more about that there. Take care, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going home.